All right, in this video, we're looking at acceleration as a function of time. So first of all, if we know, say we have some function uh, that describes our position, let's call it S, okay? Um, and then, so we'll say over here, maybe this relates to our position. This is some function, you know, this isn't, this could be constant, this could be something else, right? Um, these are all gonna relate to time, so I guess so, supposedly we could call this S at T. So now we know that the change, the rate of change of position is our velocity, right? So we can call V at T, this is our velocity. And this is going to be equal to ds dt, right? That's just the change in position over time. That's pretty much the definition of velocity. And also we have acceleration, let's call it A at T, is equal to the change, well, we can write it over here as well, before we get ahead of ourselves. Acceleration, uh, this is equal to the change in velocity over time. That's just what acceleration is. So we can just call this dv dt. All right, this is just the change in v over the change in time. Also, but if there, if v is ds dt, we're taking the derivative of ds dt. So we're basically just taking uh, the second derivative of s of t. So we can also write this as d squared s over dt squared. Right, this is just the derivative of this, which is the derivative of this. Okay, so we get the second derivative of position or the first derivative of velocity. Now, while we're at it, I'll just give you guys a quick shortcut that's uh, a pretty handy thing to know. So if we have position, then uh, we can get to velocity by taking the derivative, right? We derive position, we get velocity. If we derive velocity, we get acceleration. Uh, derive. I can't spell. <laughs> uh, but also, conversely, what we do is if we integrate acceleration and go the other way, we're going to get velocity. Integrate. And again, if we integrate velocity, we're going to get position. Integrate. Uh, can't spell today. Um, so this is really interesting. So this makes sense, though. If you derive something, that's the... You know, the opposite of deriving an antiderivative is just uh, the integral, basically. So make sure you don't do this backwards, but this is kind of the shortcut way to look at things. Now, what we want to do is we actually just want, say we know acceleration as a known function of time, right? So we're going to have this expression. I'll write it again. Maybe let's change colors. So we have, um, let's just drop the t for now so it's not as, uh, you know, let's leave it there. A of t is equal to dv dt. Okay, so what we can do now is we're, we want to solve for uh, the function, so this is our function, say we were given a at t, we want to find out what the function for v at t is and what the function for s at t is. And we can do that by integrating this. So what we want to do is we can make a separation of variables and take this t and just bring it up here, basically kind of like multiplying it to both sides. So we can write this as a at t dt is equal to dv. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we want to integrate both sides. So we can just put an integrate sign here, integral sign there. And uh, when we go ahead and do this, we're going to, we'll start with this side. The sum, uh, the integral of dv is basically just the sum of all of the infinitesimally small bits of v. So when we add all of the little bits together, we're just going to get v. So we can write that as v. And this is equal to, also that would be a plus a constant, but we're just going to move it to the other side, you'll see right away. And we'll just leave this side the same for now. This will be the cons, uh, can't talk either. Uh, the integral of a t, uh, it's a bracket, dt. And then we're just going to add that, uh, that constant that we got from integrating the dv. This is an arbitrary constant uh, right now because we took a definite, an indefinite integral. But if we had more information about the problem, like maybe the, the initial velocity, as you'll see later, then we'll actually be able to know what this c is and be able to solve. So anyways, uh, this is our expression for v at t, I suppose. We could put a little subscript t there. Um, all of this, this whole video is talking about acceleration as a function of time, and that also makes the velocity, you know, and position all functions of time. Uh, so anyways, uh, what we want to do now is, this is our expression for v at t. That's great. Now what we want to do is we want to find out what S is. So, we can switch colors again. Uh, we knew that, oh, let's go over here. Um, actually, no, let's write it down here. I'm not sure. I think we might use the space for something else. So, we have V 
at t is equal to ds dt. Right? Just the velocity is equal to the rate of change of position. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, change of variables here, bring this uh, separation of variables and bring this dt up here. So we can rewrite this as, and we'll just switch sides again so it's a little easier to see. So we'll get ds is equal to v at t dt. Okay. So again, we integrate both sides. What we do to one side, we will do to the other. And now when we add up all of the infinitesimally small bits of ds, we're just going to get s. Right, and this will be plus a constant, but we're just going to move it over to the other side again. And so we have, again, the integral of v of t dt plus, and this will be a different constant, let's call it c1 or something. And the fact that it would have been positive here and would have been positive there doesn't really matter right now because it is, um, it is an arbitrary constant at the moment. So it's just plus or minus just uh, some random constant is just the same. Like, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we'll see when we're going to take the definite integrals right away that we'll be actually able to find out what the c1 is and what the c is. And again, if we were given more information about the initial position or something like that or initial velocity, we would be able to determine these you know, without having to do the definite integral. So, but as I was saying, we'll do the exact same operations here with the, the definite integrals this time and we'll actually see what these constants are. So, let's do this again. We have now a at t, a of t, our acceleration is equal to the rate of change in velocity. Okay. Uh, now again, we separate the variables just like we did before. Uh, maybe we'll go over to the side to save some space. Uh, we can say we have dv is equal to a at t times uh, d at t. Okay, so now what we do is when we integrate, we'll just put in the integral signs here, uh, we just want to actually use our limits or our bounds here. So this will be from v naught to v, and this is uh, with respect to t, so this will be integrating from t naught to t. Okay, cool. So when we go and uh, continue on with this, again, the sum of all the little v's is just v. So we get v uh, from v naught to v, to whatever v is. Um, and then here we get, <clears throat> again, from t naught to t, and this just stays the same, dt. Again, if you knew the function, if you had actual numbers, we'd be able to fill this out. So uh, for, this becomes, we can rewrite this v uh, as v, sub, we'll sub in v and then sub in uh, v naught, so v minus v naught is equal to this, again, it's getting kind of repetitive, t naught a t dt, and we're just going to add v naught to both sides, v naught, and uh, here we can just erase it from this side. See, we just added it to both sides. All right, so look at that. This is pretty much exactly the same expression. Actually, it is exactly the same expression, I suppose, except we have the, the definite integral. And now, instead of having a constant, just some random arbitrary c, we actually have v naught. So that's kind of cool. Um, so this is actually the expression. Uh, and we can use this for any, any interval of time uh, for an accelerating object that uh, has acceleration that is a function of time. All right, so we're going to do the same thing now for the, the velocity. Uh, to solve for our function um, s of t, right? So again, we do exactly the same thing. So we had v of t is equal to ds dt. My writing is getting progressively messier. Uh, and now we will, again, separate the variables. So we get ds is equal to o v of t dt. Okay, now we're going to integrate both sides in our integral symbols. Uh, this goes from s naught to s. This goes from t naught because we're dt on this side to t. And then when we again sum up this, we get the sum of all the little s's is um, we're going to have s from s naught to s. Right, we just solved that integral, and this will just keep the same times. Uh, or times, what are we talking about? t naught to t of v of t uh, dt. Okay, cool. So 
Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to substitute in, uh, make the substitution now. So uh, this will be s, we'll substitute in s minus s, the lower limit will be s minus s naught. So we can just go ahead and, uh, actually no, I want to erase that just so you guys can see it. Uh, maybe I will to save space, we're running kind of low on it. All right, so this becomes s minus s naught, right? That came from our, uh, from here, from our integral boundaries. So, uh, and then again, we can move this s minus s naught, just add plus s naught to both sides. S naught, and we've added it to both sides now. So look at that. What we have here is just now we have an expression, uh, an actual real expression with no arbitrary constants describing our position at any, you know, for this at any time, I guess. We can find the, the distance traveled in this interval, for example. Um, and yeah, now we have all the information we need. And just to remind you guys, this was for when we have acceleration as a function of time. And uh, the cool thing also about these formulas is acceleration doesn't have to be constant to use these. So in the next video, we'll look at just uh, describing some of the kinematic equations when acceleration is constant, but uh, just know that these, these uh, expressions here in this method works when acceleration is not constant as well. Alright, see you guys in the next video.